Welcome back to the show, guys. Today we've got a big green light unboxing and opening. So much cool green light stuff from multiple different series. Nothing really fully complete other than two boxes, which are complete. We're going to open those last as they are buried under just so much cool stuff I've collected over the past few months. Some of it might be up to a year old. Uh, I just have a huge oversupply of my collection that has not come out of the packaging, which is the way I like to display them. And also it gives me a great chance to review these vehicles that I purchased with you guys before they hit my display shelves or the junkyard diorama that I have. So here's a look at just some of the vehicles you're going to see today. I'm not going to spend any huge amount of time opening these on camera with you guys as we have probably about 30 cars and trucks to look at from all different eras, all different series. And some really just awesome pieces in here. Greenlight makes such high quality vehicles. And I've picked out my very favorites from the sets. In some cases, only one out of a six car set. These are all available in stores, normal stores, I would say for the most part. No hobby exclusives in this mix. So let's get right into it. Starting off with some awesome older trucks. Well, I've brought out the parking mat, and in fact, we've got 34 green light vehicles opening up for you guys today. And uh, this is going to be a nice way to see all of them side by side on this parking mat. We're going to start off with those GMC and Chevrolet S10 and S15 trucks. We've got a couple of Jeep Cherokees as well, a 91 and a 93. Just a quick look at the package, then I'm going to open them off camera. And we're going to get straight into some other really cool trucks. Yellowstone 1974 to F250. Wow, check out the weathering on that. We'll have a closer look. The 84 Chevy K5 Blazer Custom, just to name a few. Just an absolute ton of sweet trucks here. So let's get the camera put on a tripod. This first truck we're looking at is from Blue Collar Collection Series 11. I, in fact, have the entire sealed case in the background here. We're going to open that up towards the end of the video, which means there's probably going to be a duplicate of this. Maybe it's a green machine. I don't know. I haven't even looked at it. Uh, but anyways, we've got an 83 Chevy S10 Durango with a tonneau cover. Really cool, kind of authentic beige paint color. You've got the list of the vehicles in the back, but you're going to see them all in this video. And here it is. What a sweet little truck. Uh, it's got that removable tonneau, like I said. Satin black finish on the inside of the bed liner. And lots of nice details all the way around. No opening parts, but a really authentic paint job. And uh, realistic wheels. It's got mirrors cast on it. Nice clear windows and a completely 100% perfect paint job. Next up is the 84 GMC S15 Sierra Classic. Also very retro, authentic paint job of the era for this truck. This is from All Terrain Series 14. And again, there is the full collection of those vehicles which I think I also have a sealed box of. Yes, I do. Got another sealed case of those. Could be a green machine in there. Again, being opened up towards the end of the video. So blue collar and all-terrain, two sealed cases being opened up at the end of the video after we look at everything else here. About 20 vehicles to look at first that are from various other collections. But what a cool, cool little casting. So happy that Greenlight produced these little Chevy and GMC trucks. Now, they do have separately cast hoods, which makes you think that they'll open, but in fact, they don't. Unless you're a customizer willing to drill out some rivets, perhaps, uh, you could definitely modify it to have a detailed engine, if that's really something you're after. Okay, so that sums it up for the smaller, those are the compact style pickup trucks, I guess. We've got a lot more pickup trucks coming. Uh, here's a, 80, a 68 Chevrolet C10. But first, let's look at these Jeeps I've already got opened up for you here. Uh, from the Garbage Pail Kids collection, Series 4. Now, this is a collection I definitely don't try to complete. Uh, look at the tangled Tim hair in the wheel. That looks painful, or what's about to happen anyways, if you know what happens when hair gets caught in a wheel. Um, 93 Jeep Cherokee. This looks like a limited. Now, it does have a little Garbage Patch uh, Kids decal where it should have limited on the Jeep, but it's so small, really. I found that it did not take away from the kind of the displayability, the adult displayability of this vehicle. I know nothing about Garbage Pail Kids, so I'm really only after the vehicle. And other than the license plate and that one little piece of uh, decoration above Cherokee, 
this Jeep looks very authentic and uh, quite a nice piece to have in the collection in that gloss black with the gold limited trim. Here we've got a slightly older one. This is the 91 Jeep Cherokee. And this is from the 80th anniversary. Just hit the shelves here in my area, Ontario, Canada. Uh, series limited edition. Which series is this from? I do not know. It's an anniversary series. Nothing on the back. Um, part of a six vehicle set. So definitely still something you can get in big box stores. Uh, so here we have Cherokee with limited underneath of Cherokee. That silver red pinstripe on the side. Some... Big cast wheels. No license plate on this one, but look at how clear the windows are on all these vehicles. Great job, green light. And the details on the grill, the headlights and everything. Again, cast mirrors. Really like seeing cast mirrors on vehicles where possible. And uh, that plastic trim, accurately detailed for the fenders and rocker guards. All metal casting, however. And they roll terrific. So far, all great rollers. Nothing to worry about with the wheels on these ones. And then again, side by side for the two Cherokees. You can see the difference between the older grill style and the newer grill style. Signal lights being the big difference. Uh, fog lights on the 91, none on the 93. Other than that, pretty much the same. Let's make some room for some more vehicles. I got to get opened up off camera for you guys. And that is going to be some trucks. So we've got a whole bunch more pickup trucks. And uh, here's another one that I haven't shown you guys. It's the 78 Ford F-150 Ranger XLT from Fargo. <laughs> Look at that picture. Oh my goodness. Well, that's a great movie and television show. I'm not sure if this is from the movie. I think so. Uh, series 35. That's a Hollywood series. I really do like Hollywood collection vehicles uh, as well as the vintage ad cars and the Hobby Shop are my favorite. So Hobby Shop cars, I find to be very authentic. You get a little gas pump. Uh, vintage ad cars are amazing because you got an actual car, just like the advertisement from yesterday. Those are always great to collect. But Hollywood seems to be pretty good. You get a really good mixture of vehicles from recognizable movies, sometimes not so recognizable television shows. But here we have Charlie's Angels, 1974 for Torino Brome. Very cool. I can't believe I haven't opened that yet. These are from Series 37, Buick Roadmaster Convertible. Fairly new casting from Greenlight produced last year. Got a couple to show you there, including that Hobby Shop one. 49 Buick Roadmaster with the roof. But let's start off with this one, and this is from Series 35. So it's an older Hollywood. Um, I think they only produce one or two series of Hollywood each year. So we'll open that up. Just looking at the package quick. Another garbage pail kids truck. Uh, look to me it looks very authentic though. You got a lifeguard kind of looks like a retro lifeguard other than having uh, leather heather and you know GPK on the back uh, I have no idea what that means. So don't ask me Let me know in the comments if it's of anything relevant, but I can't see how it would be I guess it might be green light made it who knows um, 50th anniversary Barrett Jackson. This is sweet actual truck that hit Barrett Jackson's auction um, Some time ago, I guess series 11 this one was probably the harder one to find out of the six vehicles, which not listed here, but they got a cool little bit of information. Not common on green light packaging. And then the sold price, $106,000 and change for this 85 Blazer. Absolutely incredible, really. Uh, Yellowstone, Hollywood. This is the newest series, and we're up at series 38. Strangely, this was the only vehicle I found at my local Walmart from that series, and I would have thought this one would have been the one to be scooped up. Um, Yellowstone Authentic Merchandise Television Show, and uh, it's got the uh, patina on it. I can't remember whose truck this is. Anyways, the, we're going to look at it a little closer, but I, I have something to say about the patina ing on this. It's not really quite up to my standards for green light when it comes to the sun fading of the roof and the hood. I'd, I'd like to see a little better than that. In other places on the truck, it looks to be great. We're going to have to get out of the package so we don't see all that glare. Right on. One more truck, and this is from Blue Collar. Not an old truck. It's a 2022 Chevrolet Silverado WT. What does WT stand for? Work truck, I would think. I don't know. It looks like a work truck. Pretty standard. It's got a Z71 uh, badging on it. And uh, there's the rest of the vehicles in the collection. So we're going to open that up, of course. Let's get those trucks opened up now. Five more trucks joining our fleet here in the parking lot. Let's start off with that 
84 Chevy K5 Blazer. Right there, first line. I'm going to pick each one of these up and give them a quick spin with you guys. But just looking at them in the parking lot. No fingers in the way. 1978 Ford F-150 Ranger XLT. What a cool looking truck. Love these old Fords. And here is a 79 Ford F-250. Or sorry, it's a 78 as well. They're both 78s. They got the same grill. One's a little bit more blacked out. Still, just an awesome piece. I am going to complain a little bit about the weathering. It should have been a little bit better airbrushed on, as we've seen in the past. Quite capable of doing so. You know, anyways, looks good. Just doesn't look great from the top down. 68 Chevy C10 Lifeguard. Very glossy. I might add, I barely had to shine any of these trucks up out of the package at all. Uh, there's been no fingerprints, glue, or any residue, which is amazing. For these little models from Greenlight. Then we've got the 2022 Chevy Z71 Crew Cab. Very cool. It does have the hitch and tow compatible hitch. You're going to see. And awesomely, I do have two hitch and tow hitched home series 13 trailers. The two very best ones. 58 CS uh, travel trailer and a 71 Airstream. So we're going to be able to give them a tow with this uh, nice new Chevy truck. All right, let's take a quick look at each one of these before we move on to the towing portion of the video. First up, here's a truck with some extra functionality and details. It does have the removable cap on the back, revealing the jump seat and spare wheel and tire. Very cool. Just sits on there pretty good. I mean, you can't turn it upside down and expect it to stay there. Got a little bit of grease on the window, but that's just normal shipping grease, I think. Nice looking truck though. Check it out. All metal, of course. So pretty cool. And it's a roller, as they all are. They've all been tested as rollers. The Ranger comes with those cool bed liner rails on the back. You don't see those on too many of the models from Greenlight. So that's a nice little touch. You got the steely wheels on there. I mean, they sit a bit wide. They're a little bit proud of the truck. It should be a little bit more in towards the fenders. That can be modified if you really want to by shaving down the uh, axle nubs. You do have to remove the wheels, pull them off, and shave down the axles to put the wheels inbound a little bit or use uh, shorter axles entirely. But nice trim on the truck, and it looks great. I mean, I'm being a little bit fussy when I'm talking about wheel widths and stuff, but just realism-wise, I mean, they're such realistic-looking vehicles with all the different trim levels and uh, details. Might as well just point some of this stuff out. This truck seems to sit a little better. you got thinner wheels on it, and they just seem to do a little better. There's still too much play in the axle, however. Uh, they probably do that so that there's less chance of the wheels not turning at all, which is always a disappointment. It's easier to shorten the axles as a hobbyist than it is to deal with too short of axles that don't turn. But check out the rusting on this truck. Great patina ink. Very nicely done all the way around. It's just when you come to the hood and the roof, I just don't really understand why they just did this kind of single splotch of color with a perimeter. When historically they've done what you see in the bed here is kind of like a, a brushed effect of weathering. Would have been pretty easy to do that. And I feel like that just kind of was... An afterthought of, well, here, let's do this for the hood. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. But I really do like the grill and the headlights. It's so clean and well detailed. Really nice truck. Would make a great camper, too. Get a little camper box for that one, just for fun. So here, let's take a look at the lifeguard truck. Got a lot of interesting little accessories on it. Surfboard, boogie board, survival boards, whatever. You got a light bar. And uh, I'm not sure if this actually is functional or not, but I'm not going to pick and pull on it. Pretty cool looking old Chevy. Got the steel wheels on it. And uh, again, super shiny all the way around. Separately cast hood. It does not open on this model. Tried that so many times. Nice rolling truck. Rolls really quietly. All right, now for a much newer Chevrolet. Check it out. Nice canvas for your company name if you wanted to put some of your own decals on it this is the truck to do it with 
this piece is removable, I'm sure. You might have to pick it off. It could be glued on. Oh, no, it's not. Look at that. You can remove that piece. There are a few little pinholes in there, but that just makes the truck look a little bit more, uh, you know, as you would see it from the dealer. Got a tire slightly off the rim. Not a big deal. You should just push those back on. They're kind of like a little bit of a ridge that holds in there. Much better. A little bit of a lobe still. Might have to pull it right off, but we'll deal with that later. So this one's going to have a bit of a lumpy ride, perhaps. Yeah, it's just catching a little bit on the fender there because the tire's bumped out a little bit. Anyways, that happens sometimes with these models. We can still pull a trailer with it, though. We'll have to send it into the shop, though, afterwards. All right, let's get some of those trailers out for a quick review because we're going to pull two trailers next. Just a little quick pass here. Uh, 58 uh, Siesta Travel Trailer in camouflage so hitch homes series 13 i don't often collect these series but here it is i can't even tell you if this is current or not probably is not i believe that i bought these in 2022 and i don't actively collect the trailers because i have so many of them already i just don't need any more cool as they are let's get those opened up and here we have those two fine looking trailers very well detailed heavy castings pretty much almost all metal the Airstream has a plastic base. The Siesta is solid metal. They weigh quite a bit. So let's hook up the trailer to the truck. We're going to start with that Airstream. Just like that. And off we go for a little roll. Check it out. Can we back it up? No problem. Oh, almost jackknifed. Yeah, that's nice. That's a nice little system there. I really do enjoy the hitch and tow functionality that Greenlight provides. It's a lot of fun. So looking at the trailer, got the propane tanks on the front, the jack that you install, all those little lights and rivets, nicely detailed all the way around. And I really do like that kind of aqua blue and white. So it's got a silver plastic base. The next trailer is this little camper. And it is solid metal, satin black metal on the base, black steel hubcaps. And very cool. Definitely well camouflaged, so let's put it on the trailer. And off we go with that truck and trailer combination. Very cool. All right, what are we going to look at next? We've got a whole bunch of very awesome cars. These are brand new, just hit the stores. Greenlight Muscle Series 27. Uh, picked up the two that I found, which are probably two of the best. And we've got some Hollywood cars as well to look at, as well as lots more to come. The sealed boxes are starting to reveal themselves. All Terrain Series 14 in there. And by seal, I mean I've just cut off, open the cardboard. So we're gonna pull those out with you. And same for Hobby Shop Series 14. A slight rearrangement of the parking lot to provide room for the vehicles we are about to look at. Greenlight Muscle, Series 27, 74 Chevrolet Chevelle Laguna S3. Very cool car. Feels like it might have a little bit too high of a lift or a rake on the vehicle. The stance seems a bit high, however you want to say it. Anyways, very cool car. Can't wait to open that up, which we will in just a second. Here's the whole set. Um, so I think I would have liked to have seen that, which was it, the 69 Chevrolet Nova. However, I know I have quite a few of those already in the collection. So really, I think I got the best too, given that I like cars from the uh, 60s through the 1980s and early 90s best. 81 Ford Mustang Cobra. Very cool. This one does have an opening hood. Actually, both of these cars have an opening hood with a detailed engine. So we'll see if we can do that for you. Uh, again, just looking quickly at the cars in the package before we open them up. And we're going to do four at a time here. Charlie's Angels, 74 Ford Torino Brome hubcaps. And uh, that, what do they call that? Lando roof, like a vinyl roof. Not much on the back, just a little blurb about uh, Charlie's Angels. American Pickers, great, great television show on the History Network. Uh, I'm not sure where this falls into that show. 49 Buick Roadmaster Convertible. Does it say? Yes, it does. There's a story, so if you want to read about it, perhaps it mentions it. I don't think it mentions this particular car. But anyways, very cool show. I enjoyed watching that one. 
So we've got four of those cars to open up. Well, let's do a few more. We've got a few more cars to open up. We're just going to get them all opened up and then move straight on into the case unboxings. This is still pretty new. Vintage Ad Cars Series 8. Um, I think this is about the fifth iteration of the 89 Ford Taurus or thereabouts. And a uh, very welcome car. I love this casting. So cool that Greenlight made it. We've got the original advert there. It's hard to read it all, but see if you can zoom in. That way, if you want to, you can pause on that, read about it. So vehicles in this uh, selection include these other ones. The 73 Ford Explorer 100 Special. I would have been interested to find that one. A2 Dodge Ram D150 Prospector. Also pretty cool. So there's a few cars from this collection I'm missing that maybe I would have liked to add. Not a big deal. Here we have another Ford Taurus, 88 Ford Taurus. This is Black Bandit, Series 27. So pretty much every new casting finds its way into Black Bandit. There's the whole series. I've stopped collecting this whole series because really uh, I like to see a little bit more detail. The black paint jobs are pretty cool, but uh, all the same. V-Dub Club, Series 15. There's a lot of Volkswagens in this. Uh, obviously, it's all Volkswagens, vans, Beetles, and these little Golfs. I like the Golfs the best because I've collected a lot of the Beetles and the vans over the years from Greenlight. So there's really not much more I need there. But those little Golfs still more parking lot rearrangements as we make room for lots more cool cars. And here they are. Just a quick pan over of these awesome cars in the parking lot alongside those trucks. A great little tip I received a couple of times in the comments over the last little while is how to open these hoods when they're hard to open. Um, cutting a piece of plastic out of the packaging and just using that to carefully get the hood started and then be able to open up is very helpful. So thank you for all those that have commented on that trick. It works very well versus picking at it with uh, thumbnails or knives or anything that could damage the paint. The plastic really does work. So again, thank you for that. Um, so we were able to open up all three hoods with no problem at all using that trick on these three vehicles that do have opening hoods. And we're going to check out those engines as we do the individual review of each car. We've got both four Tauruses out here, 88 and 89. Um, very, very glossy Black Bandit version alongside the realistic looking uh, vintage ad car series and that super colorful v-dub club accurately scaled of course everything being true 164 scale hence why a volkswagen is so much smaller than a pickup truck and everything else it's nice to see that sort of accuracy all right let's go in for a quick look at each of these vehicles before opening up hobby shop series 14 sealed box or nearly sealed and finishing off with the all-terrain series 14 trucks and seeing what else is in there in addition to the little gmc that we already looked at first up let's take a look at this big old roadmaster this is only the second one i've opened up for my collection i'm always impressed with it the amount of trim details the very straight and centered white wall tires nice big wide white wall tires you've got the buick hood emblem as well on there nice that that was included and just some great great accessory pieces that greenlight was able to uh accurately represent the tailpipe the trunk lid and handle very nicely done this one is a convertible top of course with satin red interior all metal and rolls like a dream big big car big old two-door car Another big car, and I'm going to maybe just demonstrate quickly that little plastic packaging trick for opening the hood, but already done that off camera. Got the big old four-door Torino, which unfortunately the bumper did fall off in unboxing. However, it's not broken. Just looks like no glue was applied to those two little pins, which uh, they do go in the back. It's nice that Greenlight does use separate ca uh, piece bumpers, not cast bumpers. I do like that. They're very chrome. And they do the same with the taillights. Sometimes they have a little struggle getting them completely straight. They can be adjusted by the hobbyist. But great detailed engine under the hood. And just a nice big car with a very cool paint job. Very authentic to the era. So closing the hood, you can see just how nice and tight those hood tolerances are. So it oftentimes is hard to get your, your fingernail underneath the hood. And even doing the old method of you know, banging the car off my uh, knuckle sometimes doesn't open the hood. But what did work this time 
was this uh, plastic piece of packaging just to get the hood started just like that very handy so I'm gonna be keeping that nearby for all of my reviews all right on to the next car that is the little Ford Mustang which also of course has lots of terrific details t-top sweet graphics on it with the Cobra and the engine under the hood mirrors are cast very nicely detailed car and of course it rolls great as well and now for that Chevelle the hood does open quite far so that's great you can see the engine easily nice details on the hood and grill or lights and grill and we're just having a little trouble closing the hood completely there we go I noticed one in the store in the packaging looked like the hood wouldn't close but I think really if it just is a little off alignment when you're trying to close it it won't close completely but it does seem to be closing pretty well. Pretty nice lines on that. Having a little struggle with the uh, focus here. The one thing I'd like to say is that uh, I don't know that the front bumper sticks out quite far enough on this car. As you can see, they've got the chrome plastic bumper on the back with those really detailed tailpipes below. But it almost looks like it's a little bit snub-nosed on the front. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, certainly the safety push bars seem to be a little bit short. Either way, it's a great paint job on this car. Nice wheels. They do sit a bit high, though. But uh, we've seen that before on many Greenlight models. It's not, it's not a game changer for me. I still love the model. I'm definitely happy to pick up another one to do some custom work with it. And then we've got the little Taurus. What a sweet little casting. So well done. Ford hubcaps. Or those aluminum rims. I think they were hubcaps. No license plate on this one. But they got those taillights perfectly. And no opening parts. I think they probably could have made an opening hood on this one pretty easily. Given the shape of the car. Probably would have functioned quite well. But uh, they did not. Either way, it's still a nice model. And here it is alongside uh, one year newer Black Bandit police version. Now there is just a regular police version. I think from the Hot Pursuit series. One of those ones recently came out. That is white and black. For better details with the light bar different light bar too i might add the dub club very very bright little car this one does have an opening hood as well i really like the uh livery on it a little race i have a nice little race collection of rally cars and whatnot and this one's going to fit perfectly in there nice to see that hood opens up very easily and shuts crisply very detailed little wheels check it out and it's a roller so let's get into the unboxing. We've got the Hobby Shop unboxing now. Well, in Hobby Shop Series 14, we know we're going to find these two vehicles. So we'll just put those over to the side here. And this is how they come. Pretty much from the Greenlight factory. You can buy them in sealed cases from local Hobby Shops. I got mine at my local store called Aurelia Diecast. They have a website, a Facebook page, and all the rest. You can order stuff from there, or you can just... Wander on in and buy yourself a sealed box of green lights in the hopes of finding a chase and getting everything you need. Uh, series 14, we've got the Volkswagen Type 181 The Thing with surfboards. I don't have this casting in my collection. It's new for 2023, and I'm happy to add it and review it now at last. It's not a casting I'm going to be collecting in entirety. As I said, I've kind of reached my limit with Volkswagen collectibles other than for my little rally collection. All the same, it's pretty cool, especially given that it comes with uh, surfboards. And it looks like it's going to be a neat little casting. So we've got another one of those 1990 Ford LTD Crown Victorias with police officers. Uh, it says Florida Marine Patrol on the front fender. And you can never have too many police cars for your fleet, so there's two of those. Next up, we've got another one of those 49 Buick Roadmaster convertibles with the vintage gas pump. So... A little opportunity for me to do some weathering, perhaps. Customize one for the junkyard, potentially. Uh, at the very least, I must have forgotten I bought a sealed case. And hence, here we are. The 2022 Chevrolet Tahoe or Tahoe LT Texas Edition with Man in Suit. This one is in a uh, fireish sort of metallic red. Nice truck. Very cool forward to opening that one up and then the 2021 ford bronco wide wild track with the spare tires and the spare axles 
Pretty cool. So you get two different sets of wheels with different tires. This one has the mirrors on it. Let's take a look at that closely because they look pretty fragile. I'm curious to see how they managed to do that for that truck. I think the roof will come off as well. And finally, we have a 65 Ford Thunderbird convertible with woman in dress and green hubcaps. You know what that means? That means we got a green machine. Very, very cool. Um, I like it. It's subdued. You know, it's not too much. Normally I get a little bit, uh, I don't know, sometimes I don't like to have the green hubcaps with the car, but oh well, it wasn't a car I was going to buy all on its own, although I don't have this casting in my collection either. Uh, I was just, I think, actually no I do, I have the Thelma and Louise, the, the blue one, that's why I wasn't going to buy it again, but here it is in the case. Green Machine! So for those who collect green machines, that's something to get quite excited about. And we're going to open up all of those vehicles other than the green machine. Should I open it up? I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll keep it in there. I might trade that off for a uh, regular version. I don't really know. The Hobby Shop series is great for all of those accessories. Whether you like to have extra things such as surfboards, wheels and tires, as in the case of the Bronco, or the little figures. Personally, I like the figures the best and the gas pumps. I think those are maybe my absolute favorite, the little gas pumps. Uh, we got a gas pump with the 49 Roadmaster. Here it is next to the, uh, which one was this again? Anyways, the uh, Hollywood version. So we got two Roadmasters, one year apart. Take a look at them each, or at least the newest one, the Hobby Shop. Uh, the Ford Crown Victoria, very cool. Bronco looks great. Those mirrors are not a flexible plastic, but they're nice and straight, and they've done a great job getting them on there. Truck looks awesome. What a great new casting. The Tejo and the Little Thing, both very cool castings, all metal, heavy duty, and appropriately scaled. For the time being, I'm going to keep the 65 Ford Thunderbird in the package. Let's just do a little side by side of these Roadmasters. Same car, essentially, one year difference. I don't think we're going to see any trim difference, but nice to see the black version next to the green version. Roof's a bit shiny on the black one. Probably would have been nice to have a bit more of a flat finish, such as found on the green version. Either way, beautiful cars. Nice little collection. I've got a, a, a creamy beige one as well with the roof down. So those three cars are going to look very nice together on the shelf. And, of course, the Crown Victoria is a great casting. Really did an awesome job with this one. It's got the right stance. They did the taillights really well. Transparent extra pieces. And it's nice that it comes with the little, the little policeman. Very well detailed, too. Got a nice little hoard of these things, which make good uh, diorama pieces. And, of course, as do the gas pumps as well. Got a whole bunch of those in the junk here. That's where that gas pump's going to end up, next to the other junked gas pumps. The Bronco, very good. Check out those mirrors. Pretty straight. This one's down a bit, but I'm not going to try and mess with it. Uh, truck has a good stance. Big off-road tires on it. Some uh, special graphics, looks like, on the side. Spare tire, full spare tire. And black painted base. At least I think that's metal. Uh, part metal, part plastic. This is a heavy piece. Certainly 100% die cast. And look at the clarity on those windows. Revealing lots of interior details. Looks really good. All metal. And the thing. It's the first time I've seen the thing. In green light, anyways. And it's got these nice little tiny wheels and tires. Painted base. All metal. Oh, look, we have a feature. A little opening uh, engine bay. You can kind of see an engine in there. I have to put some light in there to see it fully. Not really sure where the surfboards fit in, but if we put it down, maybe that'll help. I don't know. Surfboards are pretty big. It's a bit of a stretch, but I guess you could drive to the beach with your boards like that. Make sure they're tied down good. Everything rolls really nice. And I'm happy with this little selection. I think it's a pretty good selection. Uh, certainly... Of interest to a lot of different people so we've got one more box to open up that's all terrain all terrain series 14 are we going to find a green machine maybe a raw who knows six trucks in here looks like we're gonna have another uh thing coming out 
Well, there's my second one in the collection. This one does have a little roll cage. Good for carrying surfboards, perhaps. This is a 73 Type 181. Yellow and green. Not much to say. We're going to see all these in the package already. So we're just going to get them out of this box. 2018 Ford F-150 Lariat FX4 Special Edition. Nice. We've got the mirrors cast on it. Looks like good details. And a big 2018 Nissan Titan XD Pro 4X. This one has fragile mirrors on it, as I found out. You really don't want to bump these mirrors too hard or they will go flying. Uh, I've got about three or four of these in my collection already. Comes with the hitch and tow compatible hitch, which is great. And this truck is massive when you see it next to all the other vehicles. It's a big truck. Much like this truck here, the 2022 Dodge Ram 2500 Laramie 4x4. Another really big truck. This is a long box crew cab with a hitch. So that thing is going to be monstrous. And cool. We've got a 96 Ford Bronco. Looks like camouflage, two-tone flat black. Very neat. I haven't seen anything like that in a while. No green machines, but that's okay. Here's another 84 GMC S15 Sierra Classic. Well, this is a nice selection of trucks. All sorts of eras and brands and styles i think this combo looks pretty good together although the bronco does not come with a hitch and tow hitch for pulling these trailers i think that if you added one that would make a pretty cool combination for a diorama or something like that uh, with the camouflage top bronco and the camouflage trailer regardless let's take a look at the vehicles themselves also got the big line of trucks over here the four doors Long box. Well, this Ford is a short box, I think. And uh, we're going to take a spin of each of those. Both VW things here as well. And I think the surfboards would have worked out pretty good on this one. Sort of. Well, at least one. You could stack them if you wanted to. Not sure if this one was supposed to come with a roll cage or not. I don't know. Either way, probably should have. Yeah, I'm a fan of this truck. It looks pretty cool. Got the Bronco badging on the front fender, blacked out grill. Kind of looks like a hunting truck, hunter's truck or something like that. Maybe just uh, wildlife enthusiasts, let's let's say. Um, spare tire, all metal, and it rolls quite well. Got a bit of a wobbly back wheel, but not really that noticeable. Of course, that back piece comes off. You can see the jump seat. VW thing. Well, just like the orange one, this one actually has some, uh, looks like aftermarket wheels on it and the roll cage that was missing on the other version. Unpainted base on this one. Nice little vehicle, rolls really well. And then the big old Ford FX4. Very well detailed. We're getting close to probably a Ford Lightning being made by Greenlight. Getting up there anyways. Uh, no hitch on this truck, but decent details. Nice big mirrors cast into it. And the Dodge Ram has a plastic base, which lightens it up substantially versus the Ford. Uh, it is a big model, and it has plastic mirrors as well, which are actually straight. Looks pretty good. Decent details for the headlights and whatnot. There's always a bit of flashing to be concerned about, but uh, only if you look at it really closely, and that can be fixed up. Not so easy to fix on this model, we can see. Uh, it does have some of that manufacturing oil and grease residue on the inside of the window as I've already polished it. Uh, but this box is from last year. I almost would like to say that it looks like 2023 has been the year where every vehicle I've opened so far does not have that issue. It's just an old box of uh, all-terrain that I just am getting to now. Titan XD Pro looks pretty good too. It's got some of those window issues that we used to see in years past as well. Um, some may say the wheels are too thin, but they're probably quite accurate, actually. It's a big, heavy truck, though. Uh, black metal cast body and base. Got the hitch. And it rolls really nicely. Looks quite authentic. They all do, actually. Very nice trucks. So that is the whole mess of vehicles that we were looking at today. And that comes from uh, a lot of purchases I made recently at my big box stores and hobby shops. And also a lot of stuff that is being cleared from my uh, year of collecting here. Much of what you see in this picture 
This is uh, exclusives for the most part. There's some sets in there like Starsky and Hutch and uh, Hot Hatches and some other stuff that are near complete sets. But mostly exclusives that come from hobby shops, whether online or uh, really a die cast in my neighborhood. And we're going to be getting through all that in the coming uh, weeks and months. I'm not really sure exactly how long. We've got so much more stuff to film with you guys. Lots of cool ideas. Right now I'm just looking at cleaning up the uh, overflow here. In this busy time of year for me, spring is always very busy. I've got a few jobs on the go. So uh, fitting this in where I can, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's a bit of a long video and... Uh, if you need to, watch it in parts if you want to watch the whole thing. Otherwise, you know, if you're after anything, happy hunting. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.